Hi, I'm Tom Johnson. Welcome to this episode of Outbirding with Field Guides. In April, Doug Gottschfeld and I were slated to lead the Field Guides Colorado Grouse Tour, an invigorating 10-day, 2,000-plus mile loop full of mountains and plains, snow and desert, grouse, woodpeckers, rosy finches, mammals, and much more. In order to do some scouting for our group and to film grouse on their dancing grounds, we headed to Denver a week early ahead of the tour. In a multi-part series for outbirding, we'll present vignettes of the breeding displays of greater sage grouse, sharp-tailed grouse, and greater and lesser prairie chickens. And we'll show you why we think these dancing chickens are truly some of the most spectacular birds in the entire world. In order to experience the dance of the greater sage grouse, we head to the sagebrush flats of North Park, a high elevation basin nestled in between the snow-capped peaks of the Rocky Mountains in north central Colorado. An early start is imperative, and we find ourselves entering our camouflage blind in the full darkness of a cold, snowy April morning. As we settle in to wait for dawn, it's worth considering the range of the strange bird that lured us all the way to this remote landscape. Greater sage grouse live in high sagebrush desert in this area of the Intermountain West. Here in north central Colorado, we are near the southeastern extent of the range of the species. With snow falling steadily and the black night starting to fade into navy blue gloaming, bizarre popping and swishing sounds fill the air. Starting each year in March, Groups of male sage grouse gather by morning and evening at traditional dancing grounds known as leks. The word lek is derived from a Swedish word that refers to play and has been used to refer to the display stages of birds since the 1860s. At specific locations in the sagebrush desert, male sage grouse show up daily at these leks to challenge each other and perform their ancient mating displays for interested females. As the light comes up, a striking tableau of massive birds sprawls in front of us. A male grouse raises his spiky tail feathers and puffs up his large white neck ruff. Thin black feathers called phyloplumes wave in the air behind his head as he strides forward and booms, inflating two elastic air sacs on his chest, each the color of an overcooked egg yolk. In concert with the pops and booms, the male rakes his wing feathers against the distended white ruff on the chest, making a swishing sound. Though sage grouse meet each day for up to three months during the spring, Factors like predators and weather can affect the intensity and duration of each morning's dance. 
Early on today, the snowfall appears to be dampening the action at the lek, with some of the males dancing only intermittently, lowering their tails in between bouts of display. Even on a snowy day, the arrival of a female sage grouse onto a lek can completely change the attitude of the displaying males. Females look quite similar to males, but they're smaller and have no real ornamentation around the head and neck. Males gather closely around the visiting females and dance feverishly for them, turning their bodies between each display bout to show off their splendor from all sides. In this lek system of mating, males perform the display dance while females visit to watch and perhaps mate. Females spend most of their time walking slowly through the lek and may pause and watch the male displays for extended periods without taking any action. Because males only mate with females who approve of them, the whole system is governed by what's called female mate choice. Most females that visit a particular lek will only mate with one or two particularly dominant males. In fact, the majority of the male grouse at any given lek will not get to mate at all. When a female has seen enough and is ready to mate with a chosen male, she'll signal her availability by crouching low on the ground and spreading her wings slightly. The males don't always pick up on cues from the females immediately, and this morning, the females are mostly content to watch and wait to mate. In addition to trying to win over reluctant females, male grouse spend a lot of time fighting with each other. Individual male grouse establish small display territories on the lek, and in order to maintain those boundaries, they frequently square off and spar with males from adjoining spots on the dance floor. Occasionally, lekking sage grouse take breaks from displaying, and wander around on the lek on foot. Sometimes they'll even start to forage. These birds feed almost exclusively on sagebrush leaves from fall through spring. However, during the warm months, they will eat insects, fruits, and forbs. However, sagebrush leaves make up a major part of the diet year-round. As the snow continues to pile up, most of the sage grouse keep right on dancing. Though the weather is likely causing some males to display in a more subdued manner today, others carry right on ahead with their strutting, popping, and swishing.
though things appear to be going well on this snowy morning in North Park, the population and range of greater sage grouse have both shrunk over time. Large areas of sagebrush desert have been converted for growing crops or grazing livestock, and additional parcels are routinely explored for mining or oil and gas development. Historically, sage grouse occurred in 16 U.S. states and three Canadian provinces. However, today the birds are only found in 11 states and two provinces. Sage grouse do best in relatively large, undisturbed areas without human created noise and disturbance. And in modern times, they simply have fewer and fewer options as the remaining habitat is sliced and diced to accommodate other human priorities. Many people in the Intermountain West are keenly focused on sage grouse, and there's currently a delicate and tenuous balance struck between conservationists politicians, ranchers, and the energy industry. After a long period of considering her choices, this female grouse makes her pick and signals her decision to the male with a crouched posture and a flutter of outstretched wings. A female usually selects a nest site within about three kilometers of a lek and lays a clutch of eggs fertilized by only a single dominant male. However, females do occasionally mate with multiple males in order to complete a clutch of eggs. After mating, the responsibility of the male ends and the female is left to do all of the incubation and chick rearing. As the morning rolls on, some of the sage grouse stroll off into the sagebrush, the action subsiding without too much fanfare. However, on other occasions, this ancient daily dance is brought to a more abrupt finale by the arrival of large predators like golden eagles or coyotes. Well, that's a wrap for this episode. In future weeks, we'll bring you the lecking displays of sharp-tailed grouse and greater and lesser prairie chickens, all filmed in Colorado and Kansas in spring 2021. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you soon with another episode of Outbirding with Field Guides.